What's going on everybody? My name is Salem Sinny. Welcome to my YouTube channel. See, in this channel, we focus on three things, faith and entrepreneurship. My desire with you guys is to help you discover your purpose, understand that you are God's very best. You know, the exciting part is that if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I have a special guest with me today. Uh, I have my sister, one of my close friends. Her name is Dina, Dina Malala. And the uh, crazy thing with Dina, we were actually doing some work with her channel. Yeah. Uh, and you guys will see some of the, the stuff I'll link, <laughs> all the links to her channel and the incredible stuff she does. Dina is just somebody that I really highly appreciate. And I want you to know that I appreciate you. Um, we're, we're really close as friends. Actually, our parents, our dads, are best friends. They grew up in the same village. They used to, I know, share the gospel together when they were uh, young. The, the, the friendship still related. They're still close. They were roommates. Um, they were roommates, uh, you know, evangelized when, like, they really grew up in villages. You know what I mean? Like, you know, people like, oh, back in Africa in my days. I mean, the dude <laughs> lived in the city all his life. But my parents actually grew up in a village, really started from the bottom. You know, and now they're here. So one of the things that is really interesting with that is I want you guys to get introduced to somebody that is in the process. Young, we're both 25, and to see the perspective of what God has done in our lives. Um, my goal is always, when we talk about whether it is entrepreneurship, business, or we're talking about faith and what the journey has been as young people is today, uh, I think this is somebody that you can learn some stuff from. Uh, somebody uh, who I think can bring some value to you. So I want to talk a little bit, Dina, about what has been your, you would say, your journey in terms of um, what, how has God has played a role? You're 25 right now. Mm -hmm. And after seeing what you've seen, you've seen, right, for the past 20 years, when was the time when you really said, okay, I have to follow Jesus for myself? It hasn't just to be what our parents have done because we're both PKs, mm -hmm. right? So there, that comes with this own plethora of issues. But um, when was that time where you had to make that decision for yourself? Okay. So I was a freshman in college in Miami, Florida, mm -hmm. and I was taking summer classes. Now, my freshman year prior to that summer, I definitely lived the typical college experience. Right. And by the end of the summer, I was a little ashamed of the things that I had done. So I um, was walking in the middle of campus and I was going to go get something to eat. And all of a sudden, a complete stranger at the time, she walks up to me on campus and she says, you know, hi. And you know, she introduced herself, tells me her name. And she said, you know, your family, they know the Lord. And your grandmother, she's been praying for you. And, and you know, the Lord wants you to go back to him. And I was completely shook by that because she's a stranger. And how does she even know that my grandmother prays? Right. <laughs> so, you know, I was completely um, shook. She invited me to a Bible study um, that was happening an hour from then. And so I said, okay, let me go get my food because I was really, really hungry. I went to go get my food and then I, you know, went to the Bible study. And at that time, I did decide to, um, to rededicate my life to God. Um, however, shortly after that, I went ahead and continued living the life that I was living before. So, um, so at that time, when, when you had that experience, did this person, uh, like help you rededicate that life that same night or mm -hmm. did you it was that same night it was that same night and then i even started attending the church okay um then i came back to orlando for the summer and mm -hmm. when i went back to um miami. To miami i actually made a decision to live the life that i was living before so um mm. i ended up uh spending my sophomore year the same way that i spent it my freshman year right and um i remember the night before the end of my spring semester, I was just feeling like a sense of guilt and a sense of wanting more for myself. Mm. Um, the next day I came back to Orlando for four months. Um, I was on summer vacation, so I came back to Orlando and I remember um, my dad had gotten me an iPod. So at the time, you know, iPod, the iPod touch was it. Was it, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he got me an iPod and I was laying down in my bed and I was listening to the Mary Mary station on Pandora and different gospel songs were playing. And I just felt like so sensitive to, um, to God and just wanting more for myself. And it was at that moment that I said, you know what, I'm not turning back. Mm. Because, you know, I, I did rededicate my... Um, my life to God, I did, but I was just kind of 
all over the place um, with different things. Uh, being that I am a PK and certain things have been, um, I guess you can say spoon fed to you. They've been handed to you because you live in that environment. Right. And there's a difference between, you know, taking that for yourself and then having that around you. Um, right. And and what do you mean by that? Because I want some of our listeners who mm -hmm. don't really know what we mean by PKs, like pastors' kids. When you say spoon fed, what do you mean by that? Like, you go to church, you know, like John three sixteen and the other Bible verse. Like, what do you mean right. by that? Well, yeah, that's that's actually a good point. So I know script, I knew scriptures, I knew all the stories, right. I knew what I was supposed to, to do, do, right? But I was not actually experiencing God for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, when you experience God, that's when the change happens right. in your life. So the, the positive change. Um, so I, um, you know, I was listening to the music and I, I began to slowly just read Proverbs, one proverb a day. And that in itself, um, began to change the direction of my life. Honestly, I, I began to experience God for myself, um, because I was very used to having, family prayers we'd pray in groups mm -hmm. and you know and you know i was receiving the blessings of course but i was not experiencing god for myself for yourself. um so I, I can honestly say that i began to um to make that turning point um in april of 2012 so that was about a year after i decided to rededicate my life to god in 2011 on the middle of fiu's campus ironically you decided to do it the same time i did mine yeah I was also in college, so it's really ironic. But one of the things that that I, I that's interesting in your journey is when I think about like where you find yourself when it, and I think about you you at a crossroad almost. You know what I mean of having to make a decision. You know all the things you you're supposed to do because you grew up in a, a home of PKs and stuff, but you haven't done those things. What were one thing that um uh, how can I put this? why when that person approached you right so let's go back to that encounter that lady approached you that was random to you you didn't know her mm -hmm. right so it probably was god speaking to her absolutely why did you feel like okay well i need to obey this time versus oh no there's nothing there because i'm pretty sure it wasn't the first time somebody preached a, like a message right. that you had heard so it's actually interesting that you asked that and i forgot to add that into um, the story so i was actually looking for god but i didn't know how to find him Mm. I was feeling just guilty and I wanted better for myself and I was looking for a God. I'm like, you know what? I know that the only person that can fix all of this is God. Right. And I knew those things. I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know what my next steps were. I just felt very stuck. And it just so happens that same day later on that happened. So for someone who's watching, right, who's also feeling stuck, feeling like they're looking for God, what would be one advice you could give them? Like what was something for you? Like, there's, there's her role mm. of coming up to you, mm. right? But what are some of the things you did? Like, for example, when I hear your story, you still accepted to go to that Bible study that they were having that night, right? Because, mm. like, a random person can come. Like, some of you guys are watching a college students right now, right? So somebody random can come to you. Yeah. Uh, I've, been, I've been that person that randomly comes to people. So right. We've been in those roles. But the person she has to choose. You don't drag them to your Bible Absolutely. study. So what was something you did? that you say for someone who's looking for God, like you're in search, you need you need to find purpose. You you need to like your life seems to not have a meaning right now. What are some of the things that you had that you were doing to try to get close to God? Well, at the time that she walked up to me, I wasn't mm -hmm. doing anything. I was I was just looking. I was just like What do you mean I looking? Was, well, and see it goes back to my background as a PK I knew to pray. So right. I was just praying the best way that I could on my own. So so you were praying, but yeah. while still not living right? Well, at the time, I would say that I took a step back. It, it wasn't that I wasn't, I was just like, I was just there. Mm. You know, I wasn't doing anything. And mm. I think it's interesting that both times, um, I told you guys about 2011 and 2012, in the summertime, both times was a time that I was more so to myself. In the summer, uh, the summer of 2011, there was barely anyone on campus. Right. Most of my friends went back home or some of them even flunked out of the university, unfortunately. And then um, in summer of 2012, I came back to Orlando. So I was really like away from Miami and I was away from um, my usual environment. Right. So they were, they, they were, they happened to be times that I was more to myself. Um, now, as far as summer of 2011, I was really just praying 
you know, and asking God, you know, to come into my life. I didn't really know what to do. I was just feeling very guilty. Mm -hmm. As far as summer of 2012, it was there was more action that was being taken place as far as just like the music and reading a proverb a day. Um, that definitely really helped and, and, me. And I think that's one thing that I want some of our listeners to get, right? Mm -hmm. Besides just the one thing, you're, and this is, this is, for those of you guys who, you've experienced Jesus, you know, you have some friends you've been exposed to, or maybe you grew up as a Christian, mm -hmm. and sometimes you feel like you want God, but there are some things that you can do, like you did, Dina, mm -hmm. of like, you started reading one proverb a day, mm -hmm. right? And that's something I want the, our listeners and our viewers to see today, you don't have to do something super drastic. People always ask me, like, what's the one thing you did? I'm like, there's not a one thing you do. Right. Like, something simple, like, you know, today we have Bible apps on our phones. You know what I mean? Like, you literally have, like, this app you put on your phone that re sends you reminders every day mm -hmm. of, like, a one verse. Right. You know what I mean? You don't have to do, like, this, like, two-hour Bible study right. every morning. But you can do, like, you know, read the Bible verse a day. And I guarantee you that's going to have more of an impact than if you don't. Right. Right, something I like what you said because I wanted people to hear that that there were some steps you took right. to make sure that your this new rededication that you did was something solid. Exactly, absolutely, and you know my journey has been far from perfect, but I can say that you know as I go on, you know God has revealed Himself to me more and more, and mm. I've realized that you know it, it's okay. I think that a lot of times we feel that we have to be perfect in order to go to God, but it's actually the opposite. His right. strength is made in our weakness. Right. So right. Um, it's important to just be transparent. I, and I think that was the difference between 2011 and 2012. In 2011, I believe that the reason why I just kind of went back to doing what I was doing was because I wasn't being transparent. Right. I, it was more of um, a righteousness. I was like, okay, you know, I was ashamed and, and now I have God and I'm just righteous and you know, you end up just like falling right back as opposed to just saying, God, I'm a mess without you. Like you have to fix me because right. I can't fix myself. Right. And then just letting God do what he does best. There is, there's a difference. And, and what would you say um, in, when we're thinking about other black girls out there, mm -hmm. right? Who might find themselves in a position like you, you're, it's ironic, you're, you're educated, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you're good looking, yeah. right? You're in a society where people uh, have certain perception of you because mm -hmm. of those two different things. Mm -hmm. uh, you're black, um, but now like, what is the perspective of what God should play into that? And I'm not saying that God only plays a role because you have all these factors, you know, it's regardless of race or gender, but I'm saying those things have to play a role while also your perception of it. Cause you could be like, Hey, I'm young. I'm like, you know, I'm 25 years old. Like I can do this God thing later. Right. right. Or you could be like, Oh, listen, God, listen, I don't need God. I'm cute enough. I can get a God to be, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or you could be like, I'm educated. I can get my own money. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't need a man. Like right. I don't need all these things. And I'm not saying that this is a relationship thing. I'm just mm -hmm. saying like, how did, you being you are, with all the factors that play a role in your identity, play uh, impact or were were vital, if I should use the word vital, to your relationship with God when you look at your life today. Wow. Yeah, that's okay. That's a lot. And I was trying to break it down. <laughs> I know. Um, I was like, like okay, well, it's, try as much as you can. And no, it's interesting that you asked those specific questions because I had reached a point to where... I was actually doing, I thought that way at one point. Mm. I did. Um, and, you know, and I even tried to live that way. I'm like, you know what? This, you know, I, I was getting frustrated. You know what? I can do this. I can do that. And um, before I even go out the story, I do think that maturity plays a role. By the way, let me just say, <laughs> she's about to get her PhD, right? So, like, I'm just saying this. It's like, the reason I'm saying that is because some people might look at this and be like, oh, wow, you know, she's like that. But, you know, you look like somebody who has a master degree right so don't let her just because she's young fool you so when i said educated that's what i mean right somebody you got the degrees you know what i mean because sometimes right. people be like i got your education you know jesus is for the uneducated right right so how does that play a role or somebody can be like uh well you know, the ugly girls go to church the pretty girls don't go to church so right. how do those things impact the fact that you still needed god regardless of all those things absolutely um well i will definitely say that Maturity does play a role because there was a time where I thought those things. Yes, I am young, and yes, as Salam said, I do have the degrees, but um, I was still younger and very immature, so I thought that way, and I had reached a point 
to where for me I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was pursuing all those things and I was thinking that way, like, oh, I'm too good for that. Or I would even think that certain, like, Christian songs are whack, it's lame. Um, You know, just different, I had different um, thoughts and approaches to it. But for me, I just had gotten sick and tired of of being sick and tired that I said, you know what, I'm just going to have to try this way. Mm. I have to try this way because I had tried all the other ways. And all the other ways were not working for me. Now, as far as um, education and, you know, what you said about... uh, uh, being educated is not for the Christians or like a quote, some, a quote like that. Right. Um, understanding who you are, understanding your purpose and calling does play a role. I think that um, when we think education, we think degrees, but right. you may not necessarily need a degree to do what it is that God has called you to do. Mm-hmm. That's and good. I, I think That's that good. oftentimes people... The pe- I think that oftentimes people that know that they don't need a degree to do what God has called them to do tend to unintentionally put their thoughts and visions on onto others Mm. you know sometimes we get really excited about what we're called to do we want to share with everyone not realizing that that is actually a hindrance to those that are called to do other things so for example we still need doctors so we still need christians that are able to um like i don't want my doctor to have learned everything through youtube like i I want you to go to med school right we we, we need those doctors that that serve god that can really speak to those patients and and by the power of god heal people and we need lawyers to bring justice to our system and we need um tax collectors that are not corrupt We we need all of those things and it's important to know um your purpose and your calling right um, even for me, I personally don't think that my degrees will play a role in my future. I know that God is calling me to a, a different direction, but I know that for right now, as I'm a young person in my 20s, they play a role, but I may not need them in the future. Mm-hmm. So, um, I think Wow, it's, that it's, takes it's, a lot of maturity for you to say that. Yeah, I think it's very important to know who you are in, God, in Christ and know your calling. Wow. Um, I believe that I'm called to ministry full time. Mm. Um, so for me, I know that right now I had to be in school and get those degrees for other reasons. If I didn't go to college, I would not have met Christ right. the way that I met him. You know what I mean? That is true. It's, it's, it's all about geographical location and other things. I think we got an exclusive. If I heard you say it, this is the first time you ever said that. She said she thinks you might be called to the ministry full time. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. This is crazy. So, um, but one thing I, I, I like that you said, I think in closing, um, for those of you guys who are watching right now, somebody who finds themselves in your shoes, you're educated, you know what I mean? You're, you're ambitious, you're determined, you have things to do. Uh, what would be something that you would say to them? That person has all these things, but also has in their heart a feeling like, there's more to what I have. Like you got the degrees and you thought that would satisfy that thing inside of you, but it didn't. Right. right? Mm-hmm. Like, or maybe you wanted, you thought that it would be through a relationship. So you went and got to these relationships and maybe you satisfied the physical desire and you feel like there's something else that's still missing, but it didn't, it didn't satisfy that, that thing. And you went, maybe you went and got the money. We talk about money in this channel, right? So, right. but there's more to that than just money. Right. right. So what were something that you, would you say to someone who, might be in the similar shoes than you, some of the women watching, uh, what would be something that you could say that would be an advice to them? So my advice to you is to pursue the things that make you happy and pursue the things that you're passionate about. Um, life is way too short to pursue things just for a certain status. Mm. I think that nowadays with social media and just you know television, the things that we see in our generation and time, we're all about being flashy and fly, which we should be. You know, as women, we should be flashy, fly, care ourselves very well. But I think that we are um, all about status as opposed to purpose. So you might mm. receive a certain status and you're making a certain amount of money, but deep down inside, you're extremely miserable as opposed to pursuing something that you're passionate about and eventually um, increasing income and wealth as mm. you are. Um, pursuing what you are passionate about because if you're passionate about something you're gonna do that well right and you're gonna do it to the best that you can which right. will eventually generate strings of streams of income and wealth and even even generational wealth right um so my advice would be to pursue the things that make you um, that you're passionate about as opposed to pursuing things based on status that's my advice and you know in closing I would add also to what she says is uh, 
for those of you guys who might be like, okay, well, I'm not sure really what my purpose is. Mm -hmm. God is the author of your purpose. Amen. Right? So he has created that yet. And he, let me, let me tell you this. If God created the hair on your nose that has the very purpose to make sure you block some of the mucus and the bacteria from entering your nasal passage and going, damaging your lungs. If the hair on your nose has a purpose, how much more are you? It's true. Right? Amen. So let that be an encouragement to you to know that God loves you. He has a purpose for your life. Like she said, forget just living for status. Go for purpose. Because from purpose, you go to significance. Mm -hmm. And from, from significance, to you go to legacy. Right? Live something that goes beyond you. Amen. Um, that's all that I have for you guys today. Thank you, Dina, for coming. I mean, incredible friend. I'm telling you, man, she got the stuff. So um, I, I would put all the link to her channel on the description below. So make sure you go check out her channel. Uh, she has great content on there. She talks about beauty, travel, lifestyle. She talks about faith. I mean, just incredible stuff. Um, one thing that I'm also excited about, uh, this is going to be one of maybe many Yes. other collaboration that we'll do uh i'm excited about that uh for those of you guys who are new to your channel consider subscribing there's a lot more content such as this one that you can be able to be uplifted uh we focus on faith and entrepreneurship and anything in between really uh, our hope is to be able to bring uh some content that's valuable to you guys who are watching uh that's all that we have for me today uh if this was valuable share it to one or two people uh so they can be able to be blessed by this but until then i'll see you guys next time Always remember, you are God's very best. Amen. Take care.